is old cam. This is not a spring chicken today. Boy, okay. Typically, we sit there and talk about old cam and the comments and the headlines of today. Today, we're doing a little something a little different because this is really important. And they can't wait till Sunday, the editorial. I know. So which is immigration. Into the immigration today. Because uh, this has got to do, remember when they said that you have to pass the Health Care Act to find what's in it because nobody bothered to read it? Well, they didn't bother to read this one either. What's the deal? I actually read it and I have, I have it marked here, some of the important parts. You do? Yeah, I, just like I read the health care bill and told people about the fact there were huge areas that basically needed to be filled in. Yeah, can we put that up, that whole bill, the immigration bill? Um, it's like 1,200 pages in size. We'll I can put, put a link, link to, to it. the PDF file, yep. Yeah. yeah, here's what like I said. Uh, the Gang of uh, Eight bill was repackaged with calling a border surge amendment now from, from Senators Corker and Hoven who basically stand to gain something from it naturally. Here's what it starts. Would grant the Secretary of Homeland Security the authority to decide whether or not to implement the security technology and fencing positions within the bill and the hiring of the border guards. Uh, they said they're ignoring the world, ignoring them would result in no repercussions whatsoever. There's no penalties for not. There's no penalties, so why even have it in there? Yeah, they said. Um, the see on page. I know some of you are. Yeah, it says page 30, line four. There's a provision that gives the Department of Homeland Security, Janet Napolitano, are as it puts in any of her successors appointed by the president and approved by Congress, complete discretion on dis on display on deploying. Technology or use of alternate technology, okay. meaning the, the the fencing and the guards. You know what? I noticed something that was approved, appointed by the president and approved by Congress. So, yeah. in a recess appointment, if he appoints them and they're not approved by Congress, then they're not supposed to be able to do anything. That's with Obama. Isn't that a gray area? That's a gray area again because it's just, it is right there. It says, but remember, Obama doesn't tend to pay any attention to what the Constitution says. So. But um, the language of the bill also allows her to deploy no additional technology at her discretion. No additional technology? Remember, the, this bill has been passed once before in 2006. It passed in 2006. The money was, de uh, de the money was allocated for it, and it was, they, they said, well, they put up 600 and some miles of the 700. No, they didn't. I mean, you can drive semi. You can drive a fleet of semi trucks side by side through the parts of the fence that were never built. That's how. Well, wide because it is. it's a huge. Yeah. They said it's a that, lot of space. And they're trying to fill in those, and they need 700 miles to fill in the spots that were never done, so they never did it to begin with. They said, though, if the secretary determines on her discretion that an alternate or new technology is at least effective as the technology described and provides a commensurate level of security or that she feels that we are secure at the moment, uh, she may disregard the, the minimum set in this section. Doesn't a lot of that have to do with her discretion? It's all got to do with her discretion. Um, they said technically it requires you to have towers, camera systems, and, uh, and surveillance and ground sensors and 20,000 more people added. But the problem is um, the, the loophole, uh, basically it, the loophole allows her to decide on her, you see, Security Secretary Janet Napolitano or any of her successors appointed by the United States, approved by the United States Congress to nick the construction of any border technology if she says the te she said that the situation is well under control with the with the technology they currently have available to them mm -hmm. um, and uh, basically they have to call a border surge uh, repackaging the whole bill into amendment another one wait a minute this this passed in the ha in the senate. senate yeah now it goes to the house no it's got to pass the, they got the whole bill has to be voted on now, and they hope they're expecting to do that by Friday. Oh. The, okay. Mm -hmm. the, they said. Uh, and then after it passes that, then the, the House will never approve. They said the House is. Here's what works: is the House is going to approve a border fence first, and then uh, then legalization second. But once it's approved by the House, it goes to the Senate, and the Senate can then pull a parliamentary procedure 
uh, which they did, uh, uh, they did, they've done before, so and to simply pass it on their own vote. So it goes from Senate to House, back to Senate. It's got to go to a conference committee, and the oh, conference okay. committee. Is, it still has a long way to no, go. The conference committee does not. Uh, the House can approve anything they mm -hmm. want, but the Senate has a, a parliamentary rule that they can send their version to the president to be signed only in violation of the in the Constitution. But they've done it before. I think they call it the the hatch or something or other. Mm -hmm. law which allows them on national security issues to bypass the House of Representatives. Really? Yeah. I didn't realize that was in there. Yeah, but um, we got 35 basically uh, that it, it inserted that the, the, um, the, the Napolitan who already believe the border is, is secure can decide against adding any other security if she does feel that there's no need to have extra security. Um, they said nothing in this subsection shall require the secretary to install any in, any fencing or infrastructure that uh, she does not feel is necessary for the security of the country. Isn't that something? Hmm. They also give a waiver that requires a waiver to the requirement of this being done no later than 100, 180 years after the debate of the hmm. enactment. Uh, the secretary shall. Um, how to start to institute this, this, uh, these pieces of technology unless she therefore decides the technology is therefore not needed. And um, it basically, this, okay, it grants, uh, this what they said, that um, it is, this, this allows the people, that, as they call the uninvited guests, to be granted legalization without any of the previous voted on amendments being passed and ever passed. What? They said nothing nothing ever has to be done. It is it's it, right here it's, 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 those are in the rules. It's basically this would allow the uh, uninvited guest to be granted legalized registered provisional immigration status once Napolitano um, has basically declared that there is no need for such need for fencing or technology because the situation is already under control. With one. Yeah. So she she it, it is her decision on whether anything is ever done. How in the world did they get this to pass the Senate? Well, because um, here's what it was. They said, well, if we don't at Bill O'Reilly, unless the Republicans do something. And, and all the Republicans have voted for it. We're not going to get the Latino vote, and the Democrats won't lave us if we don't do this. Well, they said 85% of the people that have flooded in the country are socialist. They don't. They will. They may socially be. Uh, they may be Catholics, but they're also cath They're also Catholic socialists. They do not believe in what the Republican Party has to say because they as socialists. They want to be paid for not doing their job. Mm -hmm. They want free housing, free medical care, all of this. The Democrats are offering all of that. Mm -hmm. So therefore, 85% of the people that came into the country are will always vote with the Democrats. Mm -hmm. And if you give them 30 million more votes, which they said, um, they said that uh, in when it goes to the House, the House passes it. It will then come back to the Senate, and the Senate will then re-rig it. Do they have? They're going to have the Gay Rights Amendment. They're going to have the that they will get. Uh, they will get free. They will get the Obamacare, all the other things, without actually having to become citizens. But the Supreme Court has already said that if you present a, a, a legal document at the polling place, you know, um, you know, if, if, you know, if you sign a form saying that I am a citizen and I have a right to vote. The 30 million that are being brought in as family members can vote immediately. As really? early as, uh, they said, as early as the May elections, you could have 11 million people voting for the Democratic Party. You know, it's like we can't go to another country and even do anything near it like that. No, it's illegal. They said this if you like... do this in another country, they put you in a jail cell. Yeah. But what happened is, is that. Um, the, they said Republican. And I, don't, I mean, I don't understand why they feel that they have to give them this because right. Because Bill O'Reilly. Right, other, other than what? <coughs> we want their vote so we can stay in power. No, they have this weird mm -hmm. idea that if you appeal to the base of the other party, they're going to vote for you. No, no. it's not going to happen. No. Okay, you only have a Ronald Reagan once every now and then. Yeah. They said that what happened, from what it says here, 
They said it is, it is widely expected that there will be primary challenges to all Republicans that support this issue. And that, um, I, at the figures, they said that um, while the people that would not vote for him to begin with don't really care one way or the other about mm -hmm. a challenge, the people that support them, they said 67% uh, of the people that support these candidates would not vote for these candidates, again, based on a single issue. Wow. It means they're not going to get through the primary process. And what happens is, is the party swings further to the right mm -hmm. than it was before. You're not going to lose, you will not lose a House seat to the Democrats, you will not lose a Senate seat to the Democrats, because if it's in um, a Republican-controlled state, they'll elect a Republican, but they'll elect a Republican that basically is going to make more gridlock than it was before. So, all of this is, they said the party has got, remember, they give you John McCain because they thought McCain would appeal to the Democrats. They give you uh, Mitt Romney because they thought McCain would appeal to the Democrats. Because, oh, Mitt Romney. Mitt Romney and <laughs> McCain because they thought they would appeal to the Democrats and get Democratic support. Well, they didn't get any support. McCain, Mc, uh, Romney lost support that McCain had because the, the people that they need to win the election, they basically go to take a fly and leap. So that's the whole thing about the immigration reform. They've already said immigration reform will result for at least the next decade a reduction in salary because there'll be more people. What's going to happen is that Afro-Americans are going to be hit the hardest. They're going to lose their jobs as it becomes legal to hire the uh, people that are now here legally. So, and they said that they will work for less money. So places that are not union, okay. They also said it's not likely that these people are going to become union members because it then will restrict their ability to earn what little money they are earning. Mm -hmm. And uh, they will not, the, the Republicans are saying, well, it will allow us to bring the technology people we need into our country to make our industries work. Well, they'll come into the country anyway. They could if they wanted to. All it takes for a bit, if you want to bring a computer expert in to work for your company, all you have to do is say he's going to add something like $200,000 to the, uh, the economy and they'll let you come in. That's all it takes. I mean, we know people that are here in the United States, that are the foreign citizens that are here in the United States because they came in under those, under those waivers that if you can add mm -hmm. to the thing, or if you have a, 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 a digital business that will add like $200,000, $220,000 mm -hmm. to the economy, you are allowed to come into the country. And you can't tell me that a guy from India that basically can do aneurysm uh, you know, all in his head without a computer could not bring $200,000 to the business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they, they're not coming in because they can't make as much money here and because our laws are so restrictive on the money that, you know, that we've got all these taxes which they don't have in these other countries. You can go to a country that won't tax them and pay them. They can uh, have a better lifestyle. A better lifestyle. Because here part of it is yes, you make more money, but you get. You have taxes, yeah. higher cost of living. And the people that they're thinking, the people that we need to come from Mexico won't come from Mexico because they're, they, they're making a living in Mexico. So Mexico is chasing out the people that are not making any money. So, but that's the whole thing. It's just... Uh, well, and then part of it was that the economy was tight here, so they were going back to Mexico because, well, if they couldn't make the money here to come <coughs> back to Mexico, then they just went back to Mexico. Yeah. Um, and they send the money back to Mexico anyway, but will they send <laughs> Okay, here's the final thing. Will the legalizations of the people that are already here add any money to the economy? No. I don't see how it would. If they're making $100 a week now, next but when they're legalized, they'll be making less a week. It will not add to the economy because they're going to, re they're most of them, but it said 57% of the people are working in jobs that are minimum wage or below. Mm -hmm. when, they, when they become able to actually legally do this, they're going to have Social Security and all this taken out of their... Which means they have less money. Uh-huh, less money. Less, less, less money, money to spend. To, less money to spend, less money to go through the system. So then, why do they want to become legal? There's no incentive for it. There's no coming. incentive, because right now they get everything anyway. They said, well, this is going to allow us to keep track of these people. Uh, I said, what, 57 percent of the people they that, don't want to be kept that were legalized the last time didn't didn't let the government know they were here. 57 percent the last time never went and signed up, mm -hmm. and you don't. They, okay, 
Here's a trick is. Because it's these are not stupid people, folks. Don't sign up and you'll see you keep more of your money. And they know that under the plan they hear that they're guaranteed while they cannot be on Obamacare, emergency room access, which they already have, must be guaranteed to them. Mm -hmm. So and then you and so there it is. That's the whole capsule. It's just a Republican boondockle because they want to be loved. <laughs> Okay, Republicans, <laughs> it's not going to help you. I, I know. It's um, like, okay. Uh, it, it's like the parents when the, when the kids are, the parents are getting divorced and they yeah. just want to be loved by the kids. Right. And then the kids use the parents against each other. Yeah. Here, here, here's the thing. This is, um, the, well, instead of doing my bubbles on this, we'll do a Mark Twain thing because we don't do money bubbles on the tutorials. But Mark Twain once said that if you go into a, a kennel, with a bulldog, and a bulldog bites you in the ass, he's more than likely going to bite you in the ass every time you go into the kennel. 